Today we're going to be talking about how to evaluate an integral where you have the product of a sine function and a cosine function. And in this particular case, we have sine to the seventh of theta times cosine to the fifth of theta. And the strategy we're going to talk about for evaluating an integral like this applies to integrals where the exponent on the sine function and the exponent on the cosine function are both odd. You want to use a slightly different strategy if one of them is odd and one of them is even, or if they're both even. In this case, we're going to talk about the strategy you use when both the exponents are odd. So we have 5 and 7, and those are both odd numbers, so both of ours are odd. The first thing we want to do is make a change to our integral where we pull out one of the sine thetas or one of the cosine thetas to make the remaining exponent even. And you can choose either one. I usually choose sine just out of habit, but you can make this change to either the sine function or the cosine function. Let's just do the sine function to see what that looks like. But what you want to do is pull out one sine. So what we'll end up with essentially is sine to the sixth of theta times sine of theta times cosine to the fifth of theta. And remember, you only do this to one of them, either the sine or the cosine, but we just took one out so that we have sine to the sixth of theta times sine of theta would be sine to the seven of theta, which is what we had. We just factored one of them out so that we were left with an even exponent here, six being an even number. And what we want to do now that we have that even exponent is change this so that we have sine squared of theta and we'll raise that to the third power because sine squared of theta to the third is sine to the sixth. So we want to get this so that we're just left with sine squared inside our parentheses. And then we'll go ahead and leave these two alone. So sine of theta and cosine to the five of theta d theta. The purpose of getting that even exponent and and factoring this so that you just have sine squared theta inside your parentheses is so that you can use this substitution identity here, this trigonometric identity, sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared of theta. So this is a standard trigonometric identity. Since we have sine squared of theta, we can make a substitution for 1 minus cosine squared of theta. So what we'll have now is the integral. We'll make our substitution and we'll get 1 minus cosine squared of theta cubed times sine of theta times cosine to the fifth of theta d theta. Once you've made that substitution, now you want to go ahead using uh, this trigonometric identity, now you want to go ahead and make a u substitution. And the u substitution we want to make is for cosine in this case. Whatever's inside the parentheses here that you've got in this particular spot is what you want to make your u substitution for. So we're going to set u equal to cosine of theta, not to sine of theta. So we'll say u equals cosine of theta. And then of course, whenever we make a u substitution, we take the derivative of u to get du. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we get negative sine of theta d theta. And now we want to go ahead and solve this for d theta by dividing both sides by negative sine of theta. So we get d theta is equal to du over negative sine of theta. And now that we've done that, we can go ahead and make substitutions inside of our integral. The reason that we set u equal to cosine of theta is because we had cosine of theta inside of our parentheses here, and we really wanted to make sure that we got that simplified. So what we're left with is 1 minus, because u is equal to cosine of theta, cosine squared of theta is going to be equal to u squared. So we have u squared and then cubed, of course. Now here, we're going to go ahead and leave the sine of theta. Cosine to the fifth of theta will just change to u to the fifth. And then we know that d theta is equal to du divided by negative sine of theta. And this is why this strategy works out so well, is because now, as you can see, we have a sine of theta in our numerator and a sine of theta in our denominator, so those two will cancel. Keep in mind it's really important that this negative sign does not cancel. It has to come out in front as a constant coefficient. We'll actually pull that out in front of our integral. 
What we'll have now is we'll pull out the negative sign, so we'll get negative, and then we have the integral here from zero to pi over two. Now what we're left with is u to the fifth, which we'll kind of move out in front here, times one minus u squared cubed du. All we need to do now is simplify. We need to expand this and simplify it so that we ju are just left with a simple polynomial, and then we can go ahead and take the integral. So I'm gonna do that really fast, and then once we've got this simplified, we'll evaluate the integral. Okay, so now what we've got left over, now that we've expanded our terms here and simplified, is negative, uh, negative one here times the integral from zero to pi over two of u to the fifth minus three u to the seventh plus three u to the ninth minus u to the eleventh du. So now we can easily integrate. What we'll get is negative times, and we're just reversing the power rule here. So remember, we just add one to the exponent, so five plus one gives us six, and then we divide by the new exponent, so what we end up with is one-sixth u to the sixth. And we'll go ahead and apply that through, and we'll get negative three-eighths u to the eighth plus three-tenths u to the ten minus one over twelve times u to the twelfth. And we're going to be evaluating that on the range 0 to pi over 2. Now before we do that, we need to go ahead and make a back substitution for u. And I erased the steps we had taken before so we had more room, but remember that we made a u substitution, u equals cosine of theta. So we need to go ahead and substitute cosine of theta everywhere where we have u. Now in order to evaluate this definite integral, we need to go ahead and plug in this top number, pi over two, that's our upper limit of integration, and then we'll subtract whatever we get when we plug in zero, and we'll get to our final answer. So cosine of pi over two is just zero, and zero raised to the sixth power is still zero. So what we're gonna end up with here when we plug in pi over two, notice we have all cosines here. So essentially we're gonna get zero minus zero plus zero minus zero, when we plug in pi over two. So that's the first piece. Then we're gonna subtract whatever we get when we plug in zero. Cosine of zero is one, and one raised to the sixth power, eighth power, 10th power, 12th power, is still just gonna be one. So essentially all we're left with is one sixth minus three eighths plus three tenths minus one twelfth, and now we just need to simplify. So obviously all of the zeros don't matter. This negative sign will cancel with this negative sign. So we'll just have one sixth minus three eighths plus three tenths minus one twelfth. Now we just need to find a common denominator. Our common denominator is gonna be 120. So in order to get 120, we'll multiply one sixth by 20 over 20, we'll multiply negative 3 eighths by 15 over 15, we'll multiply 3 tenths by 12 over 12, and we'll multiply negative 1 twelfth by 10 over 10. So what we'll get is 20 over 120 minus 45 over 120 plus 36 over 120 minus 10 over 120 when we simplify that. And 20 minus 45 plus 36 minus 10 turns out to be one. So we have one over 120 and that is our final answer. So these are the steps that you're gonna follow to evaluate an integral whenever your integral is the product of a sine function and a cosine function where you have higher order sine and cosine functions 
both of which are odd. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.